neonatal care. This is part one, which will include a brief introduction, discussion of the transition from the fetus to the newborn, and the arrival of the newborn, and the paramedics interventions and preparation to be ready for when the newborn does arrive. So newborn or neonate care must be tailored to meet the needs of the population. So there's two terms here that you do need to know and understand the difference between the two because you will see these terms come up. Newborn, which means within the first few hours of birth. Neonate, which means within the first month after birth. Supporting the needs of both the newborn and the caregiver is important. It's going to be very important that you remember that on the ambulance or in the field when you are caring for someone, once that baby is delivered, you will have two patients and you need to be prepared, whether that is extra help or being able to multitask and care for two patients at one time. A couple of things that you do need to remember as far as supporting the needs of both the newborn and the caregiver. Number one, allow them to be as physically close as possible. This is very important to the early stages of the development of the newborn. Skin-to-skin -skin care is very important. Explain what is being done and provide details for transport plan to the next level of care. Very important to remember, and you've discussed this in the OB chapter, but this is not typically part of the mother's birth plan having the baby in the field and so it's going to be a very emotional time and you do have to focus on the newborn but you also have to focus on the needs of the mother and the support of the mother as well. Skilled care interventions to optimize cardiopulmonary function are required in only 5 to 10 percent of deliveries. The thing to remember is that in most situations, babies have been delivered for years and years and years and years, and most of the time, they're uncomplicated. There's not a lot of work for you to do. You just need to make sure that things happen safely. Approximately 8% of newborns delivered each year weigh less than 5.5 pounds. The most common cause of low birth weight is going to be prematurity. Mortality increases as birth weight and gestational age increase. So just a quick discussion, there are multiple videos that you can watch and you can get into more detail as far as the transition from the fetus to the newborn, but it's very important to understand that physiologically things happen at the point in which the, the child is delivered and major shifts occur in the circulation. Fetal circulation has three major blood flow deviations or shunts. You need to know these because there are many different types of disorders that you may see come up. Low frequency but high criticality. The ductus venosus, the frame and ovale, and the ductus arteriosus. The ductus venosus is a shunt that allows oxygenated blood in the umbilical vein to bypass the liver and it carries it to the inferior vena cava and ultimately the left heart for systemic circulation. The foramen ovale is an opening between the left and right atrium which allows fetal circulation to bypass pulmonary circulation and the ductus arteriosus is a normal fetal artery that connects the aorta and the pulmonary artery and this allows blood to detour away from the lungs at birth. All of these shunts are patent while the newborn, while the fetus is in utero, but they close off at birth and that's what actually transitions into normal circulation. In this image, you'll see several of the structures that are part of the fetal circulation. The three in particular that we talked about right here, you'll see the ductus arteriosus. Here you'll see the foramen ovale. And here you'll see the venous duct or the ductus venosus. 
So for this transition to occur, the first breath is triggered by mild hypoxia and hypercapnia. Tactile stimulation and cold stress promotes early breathing. Pulmonary vascular resistance drops and the lungs fill with air and more blood flows to the lungs, which begins to pick up oxygen. Delay in the decrease of pulmonary pressure can lead to what's called delayed transition, hypoxia, brain injury, or even death. Table 42-3 lists several causes of delayed transition, hypoxia, meconium or blood aspiration, acidosis, hypothermia, pneumonia, hypotension, sepsis, asphyxia at birth, pulmonary hypoplasia or underdevelopment of the pulmonary system, and respiratory distress syndrome. As we're preparing for the arrival of the newborn, there are several things that we need to be aware of. Patient history from the mother. We need to cover our grounds as far as gestational age, contractions, imminent delivery, whether the mother has had routine prenatal care, any types of issues leading up to the pregnancy. And we also need to prepare our equipment. If you're on the back of the ambulance, preparing for the arrival of the newborn means that you need to warm the back of your ambulance up. I've heard it once said that if you are comfortable in the back of your ambulance, then it's not warm enough for a newborn. It needs to be very warm on the back. Minimum needs would be a warm dry blanket, bulb syringes, small clamps or ties to cut the cord, and a clean pair of scissors. Most of this will be found in the OB kit. Other key questions to help determine resuscitation and need of equipment is going to be the woman's age, the length of the pregnancy, presence or absence of fetal movements, any types of bleeding, any pregnancy complications, rupture of membranes, what was the makeup of the fluid when the membranes ruptured, is it possible that we have a multiple birth here? But it's also very important to remember that in the event of delivery, 90 to 95% of all newborns require no active interventions at birth. But for the 10, 5 to 10% that may require intervention, you need to be prepared. Make sure you have plenty of blankets. When the baby is born, you want to get your APGAR, you want to confirm your ABCs. Place the newborn on the mother's chest, skin to skin. Suction the mouth, then nose if needed and only if needed. Keep the newborn at the level of the mother. Cover the foot of the stretcher with clean, warm blankets for the initial stabilization. If more extensive resuscitation is necessary, transition the newborn to a second ambulance with a neonatal transport incubator. Once the newborn has arrived, clamp and cut the umbilical cord. If the cord comes out ahead of the newborn, the blood supply of the fetus may be cut off. Relieve pressure on the cord by gently moving the newborn's body off the cord and pushing the cord back. Your primary survey should be done simultaneously with any treatment interventions. Note your time of delivery. Monitor your ABCs. Assess airway patency, respiratory rate, effort, tone, pulse rate, and color. Expect, inspect the skin for any abnormalities. Abnormal findings may include vernix or a white cheesy material on the newborn skin, edema, and Mongolian spots. Mongolian spots are dark or blue pigmentation over the buttocks and lower lumbar regions in patients of African, Asian, Mediterranean, and Native American ancestry. And these are considered to be normal variants. Jaundice won't typically appear in the newly de delivered child. Typically, jaundice can appear in healthy newborns two to five days after birth and typically disappears after about one week. We want to examine the head for symmetry and abnormalities. Examine the eyes of the neonate for irregularities. A newborn who truly cannot open his or her eyes may have a congenital defect. Look for abnormal eye movement such as nystigmus. Subconjunctival hemorrhages are common and harmless in newborns. Also observe uh, for any drainage or ocular discharge from the eyes, which may indicate a blocked tear duct. Inspect the newborn's umbilical cord to detect abnormalities and note the presence of any abnormal abdominal finding. 
One of the biggest things that we're concerned about initially is the risk for hypothermia. To ensure thermoregulation, we want to place a newborn on pre-warm towels or radiant warmer. Make sure the head and body is dried thoroughly and we want to discard any wet towels, cover with dry towels, and cover the head with a cap. Position the newborn to ensure a patent airway, clear secretions, and assess the respiratory effort. In the event that you have a normal delivery, these are the steps that you need to take and just transport quickly to the hospital. Monitor both mother and child. This is the end of part one. If there's any questions, please email me, nickray at suscc.edu.